Who was Dominique Aubrey, and why was her death shrouded in mystery? Join us as we investigate the puzzling circumstances surrounding her untimely demise. Was it an accident or something more sinister? Are you curious to know more about this story? A wealthy widow, well known to all of Paris as a longtime figure in the jet set, had been depressed since the death of her husband in the winter of 2005. On Thursday, December 1, 2005, precisely at 2.27 p.m., she was found lifeless in her luxurious barge in the Hauts de Seine. The Neuilly sur Seine police station was alerted to the discovery of a body on a barge moored at 42 Boulevard Koenig. It was determined to be a suicide on sight. The police discovered an imposing vessel plunged into semi-darkness, immediately falling upon the body of a woman suspended by the neck from a blue nylon marine rope attached to the 11th step of a spiral staircase leading to the first floor of the barge. The deceased's feet almost touched the ground. She was wearing jeans and a pullover. Facing the body were two antique chairs, the backs of which were broken, which the unfortunate woman had undoubtedly used to pass the rope around her neck. Apart from these overturned chairs on the ground, the police noted no disorder in the barge, which was filled with luxurious furniture and valuable works of art. One of Dominique Aubrey's closest friends, Frank Renard Payan, discovered her body. He had been trying to reach her since the end of the morning, but she wasn't answering. Concerned, he went back to her barge, which had an elevated gangplank. Since Dominique had already attempted suicide in July 2005 and had been found unconscious in the dining room, Frank was worried. He asked Gabriel, the owner of the neighboring barge, for a spare key and opened the door. Dominique's Dalmatian dog, Theo, took the opportunity to run out, and that's when Frank found her. He realized she was dead, and after leaving the barge, he asked Gabriel to call the police immediately. Frank Renard Payne explained that he had been seeing Dominique almost every day, especially since the tragic death of her beloved husband, Jean Aubrey. Jean had died of a heart attack in January, while flying back from Mauritius with his wife, who had made the trip sitting next to her deceased husband and wrapped in a blanket. Frank said that he had dinner with Dominique the night before her death and that she had been drinking before he arrived. He left her around 9.30 p.m. and she was already drunk. The autopsy confirmed that Dominique Aubrey had consumed alcohol before her death with a blood alcohol level of 2.44 grams per liter. She had also ingested medication and traces of zolpidem, bromazepam, and panadine were found in her system. However, experts stated that the combination of alcohol and medication was not the cause of death. There were no signs of violence or defensive wounds, and the death occurred the night before. The initial findings indicated that it was a suicide. Two months after the discovery of the body, on January 23, 2006, the Nanterre Prosecutor's Office closed the case. However, Dominique Aubrey's family, her mother Genevieve, and her brother Frederick disagreed. They believed that she was not suicidal, and they filed a complaint against unknown perpetrators for voluntary homicide. An investigation was opened on January 31st. The theory of voluntary hanging is going to be questioned. The best friends of the widow will then take center stage in a sordid affair, a murder that would have been disguised as suicide. Dominique Aubrey's family does not believe in suicide. Her mother said she had spoken to her on the phone the day before her death and that Dominique had travel plans. She was supposed to come celebrate her birthday on December 3rd with Frank Renard. Frederick, her brother, was angry with his sister, and they no longer had any relationship due to a financial dispute. However, he also doubts suicide. A friend of the couple that formed Dominique Aubrey and Jean Aubrey is not surprised that she wanted to commit suicide, but is surprised that the victim, who did not know how to use her ten fingers, made a knot in a rope. The fact that she consumed a lot of alcohol and medication and was drunk that evening would have prevented her from climbing on a chair and achieving her goal, even though acquaintances of the couple insist that suicide was on the mind of the deceased. An obsessive idea takes hold of the judge's mind. A witness recounts that Dominique had talked to him about her will. She was going to leave everything to Frank Renard Payen, who was everything to Dominique and John Aubrey, the couple considered him their spiritual son, the son they should have had. The police are investigating the entourage of Dominique Aubrey, a context they describe as deleterious, where questions of money are omnipresent, and in which the presence of Frank Renard Payen, often jealous, 
would be predominant. His detractors say that he isolated Dominique after the death of Jean Aubry and that he said, we are going to eat the cake. The investigators established that two months before her death, Dominique Aubry contacted her notary to deposit a will. She did not want her family to inherit her fortune. An antique shop on Avenue Mozart, a flea market stall, an apartment on Avenue Foch, a house in the countryside, and the barge totaling 14 million euros. On October 5, 2005, Dominique Aubry went to her notary accompanied by Olivier Stache. She made Frank Renard Payen her universal legatee, and he was already the beneficiary of a life insurance policy worth 900,000 euros. This was a windfall for Renard Payen and Stache, who were going through financial difficulties. Moreover, Olivier Stache's DNA was detected on the rope used in the hanging. On June 12, 2008, the two friends were charged with murder. The justice system therefore leans towards the assassination of the wealthy widow with the clear intention of two destitute individuals to seize her immense fortune. They deny their involvement vehemently and the justice system will try to establish it. After the death of Dominique Aubry, her universal legatee, Frank Renard Bayon, had received the promised life insurance of nearly 900,000 euros. The police had also recorded movements on Olivier Eustache's bank accounts. Renard Payen had also gained control of the barge, a floating museum of 300 square meters where the immense terrace was perfect for memorable parties with all of Paris. During the first search, a police officer reported finding jewelry, art objects, and paintings hidden everywhere in the gym, and even in the bathtub trap door. Frank Renard Payen and Olivier Eustache deny killing the widow, but the justice system will not let them go, especially since the medico-legal examinations are fluctuating. Suicide is possible, but murder, particularly by strangulation, is not formally excluded. No less than 32 expert analyses of phone recordings have been carried out. The latest judge in charge, Thomas Casuto, even had the idea of confronting Renard Payen and Eustache with Theo, Dominique's Dalmatian dog who was on board the barge. He spent the night next to his deceased owner and witnessed her death on July 8, 2008, at 9 a.m. They transported Theo to the scene in the presence of Theo, knowing that dogs are animals that can remember trauma. The Dalmatian is a breed that has the particularity of loving its master. Dr. Gilbert Mouthen, a veterinary expert, took note of the dog's behavior. He stared fixedly at the stairs and was visibly worried. They then presented a half dozen articles of clothing to Theo, who allegedly showed signs of fear three times. They then walked between six people, including those under investigation. Theo apparently displayed a defiant attitude towards the sixth person, who was identified as Olivier Eustache. This analysis ultimately led nowhere and was even put on hold in the legal proceedings. No proof, no confession, but a bundle of presumptions against the two suspects. They will therefore be sent to a court of assizes to answer for the death of the widow. On March 4, 2014, Frank Renard Payen and Olivier Eustache, both dressed to the nines, appeared freely before the Cour d'Assises des Eaux de Seine in Nanterre. If Renard Payen is acquitted, he can claim the 14 million euro inheritance from Dominique Fontaine Aubry. This playboy, born into a family of the upper bourgeoisie, has had a thousand jobs. He even worked in Regine's nightclub, the Queen of Parisian Nights. Is it possible that he schemed a fake suicide to access the inheritance? Those who know him don't believe it. They describe him as a fragile boy with a heart of gold. Too many doubts in this story. The accused are ultimately acquitted. On October 5, 2015, at the Court of Appeals in Versailles, the trial of the two men begins. The lawyer for the missing woman's brother accuses Frank Renard Payen. You were supported by your first wife, then by Dominique. You paid off your debts with the money you received after her death, says Master Schnurb. A psychologist describes the accused as an immature man who remained in a sort of high society marginality for a long time. About 30 experts appear in the courtroom without any certainty being established about the circumstances of Dominique Aubry's death. The defendants insist they did not kill her, while the attorney general describes them as unsympathetic and asks the jury to sentence them to at least 20 years in prison. The trial in court is scheduled to last for 14 days. This time, will the jurors believe the prosecution's theory of a staged suicide? 
On October 19, 2015, Frank Renard Payen and Olivier Eustache are in tears upon hearing the verdict. They are once again acquitted. They did not kill Dominique Aubry, nor did they stage a crime as suicide. This is the trial that was too much for Eric Dupont Moretti, who was then the lawyer for one of the defendants. An additional year of harassment for these men who are completely innocent. The jurors did not believe in the criminal pact or assisted suicide described by the prosecution. They did not consider Renard Payen as a greedy freeloader. With this verdict, Frank Renard Payen once again becomes a rich man by default. He can claim Dominique's inheritance which amounts to 14 million euros. After 10 years of investigation, two trials, the sphere of the death on the barge is closing. Even though dozens of reports and expertise have never been able to establish the exact scenario of Dominique Aubrey's death, it is considered a natural death of a desperate woman consumed by alcohol, shattered by the death of a husband with whom she had formed a single and unique person for many years. I hope this video was productive for you all. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos.